the good thing about this field is it, it's all natural. The tonnage that we have here is done with no commercial fertilizer. Well, today we're out here on pivot number two here in Heiko, and we're cutting our first hay of the season. It's May 13th, and uh, it's been kind of a cool spring, kind of a long spring. We might be a, a, a little bit, wait, 10 days late or so on, from normal here on this. But everybody in northern Utah and uh, Idaho is probably looking at this and saying, well, I wish I had stuff that's tall by now. Their stuff's about that tall. but. <clears throat> This is a three-way grain and an alfalfa mix. And so this field here is an alfalfa field, but last October we brought the grain drill out of here and we drilled a, a three-way mix in it. The taller stuff that you can see here is a triticale and a beardless barley. Anyway, there's kind of a mix. Um, but the good thing about this field is it, it's all natural. The tonnage that we have here is done with no commercial fertilizer. The alfalfa, which is a legume, is um, a nitrogen fixer. It has nodules on there that fix nitrogen in the soil. The grain is a grass that needs a lot of nitrogen, and, and so they work together um, uh, to provide fertilizer for the grain from the alfalfa crop. So the only thing we put on the, the uh, alfalfa as far as fertilizer is hog manure. Um, Pigs don't digest phosphorus, so it's a great phosphorus source that's organic and it's available to us. And so that's the fertilizer program on this field. Now, we show you this in, in regard to the cattle because this crop, we will take it, we'll cut it for hay and preserve it so that our cattle continue to eat and, and be on a diet through the winter that, that is good for them. Um, because we have seasons here, and we have about six months out of the year that we can't grow anything from October to about April. We have to have to feed the cattle something that's stored and preserved. And so this method of putting up hay is how we preserve that feed. And uh, anyway, we just wanted to show you this field because it's the first one of the year and it's actually um, a re really good tonnage and, and a, a great product. If we cut this too early, then the seed head is tucked inside the leaf and then it's hard to get it to dry uniformly. So we cut it early as soon as this seed head comes out um, because then we ma maintain a higher protein and higher digestibility in the plant, but we want that seed head to pop out so that it's not in the boot so that it'll dry efficiently. A lot of people when they cut grain hay cut it at various stages some of them will wait till this grain develops till it's in a milk stage. Um, but generally on that case they're pushing the growth of the plant as long as possibly can to get production and tonnage but the quality of their feed is declining as they go that way. The protein and the actual digestibility of the plant is going downhill and so it, it's a balance. We're going to go look at this swather for a minute and uh, then we'll cut some hay. The, the hay here, it goes through a, a process called a crimper. The crimper just basically dents the stems that allows the moisture to uh, evaporate out of there quickly. And so it, it's just like a still, still roller that um, presses these stems and so that they're, um, they can just release their moisture a little easier. These alfalfa ones you'll just notice have this little kink or break in them and it it allows it to dry down and so the machines that we use I mean they're very specific and they're what we like for this particular crop to to get it dry uniform if we have half of, of, of it dry or a lot of it dry except for a clump that clumps gonna heat and mold and, and be bad so it's very important for us to, to make it very uniform now these end rows are what we're going to drive on to get all the rest of the rows, but we also have a very specific way that we'll cut a circle like this to, to drive on the wind rows and stuff the least amount as possible because wherever we drive over them, it's going to pack it and there's going to be a wet slug in there. So we always have to be careful about that. 
So this is the header on the swather. These we call turtle shells because look, they look like a turtle shell. But basically all of these knives are connected together with a set of gears underneath here that's a gearbox. And so all those knives spin opposite ways as they go. You can kind of see that this knife's pointed that way, this knife's pointed that way. And it throws all the hay back into this. This is that crimper that I was talking about. It's just these steel rollers. And all of that product goes through those steel rollers. And that's what causes that break in the stem which again lets the moisture out and lets it dry down efficiently. All the competitors um, on swathers and these kind of machines, they always brag about their dry down. Well, mine dries a day faster than yours dries a day faster. And again, we're trying to preserve as much of the vitamins, nutrients, everything we can in this crop so that the cattle get the best quality feed in the winter time that represents what they also get in in the summertime. So the vitamin A, the brightness of the crop, the color that's in the hay, that's all important to us. And so the less days that we let it lay in the sun and bleach out, the more we're preserving in the crop. And so a lot of the things we do that way. A lot of people probably seen older swathers that have a sickle bar that had a guard and the knife moves back and forth. But these spin at 1800 RPMs, and so they're spinning at a really high rate, and it allows us to drive these machines really fast. Um, a few years ago, in models older than this, to tackle a, a, a field with this heavy of tonnage would have been a slow process. It would have taken, you know, days to cut this 100 acres. And with these two machines running at the same time, at the speeds that we're going to run here today, it, it, it's a few hours. I mean, with both machines running, we'll be out of here in three and a half hours. And so uh, just a little bit different world as far as cutting hay. Well, I'm thinking about it um, too. We, we come, came here at 10 o'clock in the morning. It's about 1030 now. But we wait for all the moisture to evaporate out of this, any dew or anything that's settled again, because we're putting the driest product that we can in the windrow. Got this little wind, that night moisture's kind of lifted out of here. Then other things that we consider when we're cutting hay is uh, the respiration of the plant. So during the day like this, the plant is uh, doing photosynthesis. It's building sugars. It's it's using sunlight and chlorophyll and, and it's, it's, it's building sugars. At night, it's in the dark and it does cell respiration and it uses those sugars to live on. And so um, generally, we, we want to kind of time that out where we're, we're conscious of that. Uh, some farmers don't have that option. They just have to cut hay whenever and all day long because they just got to get the job done. Again, when we have machines that allow us to do it quickly, we can pick the time of day that maximizes the amount of sugars in the plant. And, and so, you know, we, we consider some of those things when we cut as well.